assalamu alaikum in this session we'll be talking about what a sentence is remember when we talk to each other when we communicate with others we use a string of verbs we convey our ideas our thoughts our feelings in the form of uh, a collection or combination or a sequence of words and words join and make our conversation a group or a collection or a combination or a sequence of words which makes complete sense which gives a complete idea which conveys complete meaning or message to others is called a sentence in english a sentence always starts with a capital letter and ends in any of three punctuation marks they are full stop question mark and exclamatory mark or sign of exclamation for example i saw a boy in the market where do you live may you live long in these three examples you can see each sentence starts with a capital letter for example i saw a boy in the market here i is capital and this group of words ends in a punctuation mark which is called a period or a full stop similarly the next example where do you live w which is the first letter that is capital and as it's a question it ends in a question mark in the third example may you live long the first uh, letter of the first word is capital and that is highlighted too and uh, it ends in sign of exclamation or exclamatory mark and all these three combinations of words convey complete ideas they give complete meaning they give complete sense so they are sentences if a group of words is there which does not convey full meaning that won't be called a sentence here in this slide you can see the same three examples the same collection of words the same strings of words written once again displayed once again and you can see they convey full meanings but they are not called sentences it is very interesting thing although the same strings of words are there the same combinations of words are there which were considered as complete sen sentences because they conveyed full meanings previously but here in this case they are not sentences why because if you we focus on them they do start with capital letters but they do not end in the punctuation marks they do not have ending punctuation marks in the first example i saw a boy in the market although there is a completely meaningful string of words but it does not end in full stop so it's not called a sentence in the second case where do you live although it makes a question it's a completely meaningful statement but it is not considered to be a sentence in english why because it does not end in question mark a question or an interrogative sentence as it is called must end in question mark otherwise it won't be a grammatical sentence in the third example which is an optative sentence we will be discussing in another lecture kinds of sentences and uh, uh, this is also a completely meaningful unit it is also a completely meaningful and sensible collection or group of words but still it won't be considered to be grammatical and meaningful unit because it does not end in the required punctuation mark now here in this case 
we do have punctuation marks proper punctuation marks are there again the same examples displayed and you can see I saw a boy in the market there is full stop in the end where do you live there is question mark in the end may you live long sign of exclamation is there in the end and all three statements do convey complete meanings but still in English they are not considered to be logical sentences they are just collections of words conveying full meanings but they are not sentences why because they do not fulfill the requirement that always an English sentence must start with a capital letter and I is small I saw a boy in the market the first letter I is small which makes it a non sentence which makes it ungrammatical where do you live again a meaningful unit and it does have a question mark in the end but still it is not a logical sentence because it does not have uh, capital W in the beginning and may you live long again the same logical meaningful sentence meaningful unit of words rather but it is not considered to be grammatical sentence because M is not capital and that is an essential requirement for a sentence to exist now it means we can conclude that a sentence must start with a capital letter and it must have an appropriate and logical punctuation mark in the end if it is statement it must have full stop if it is question it must have question mark if it is an optative or exclamatory sentence it must have a sign of exclamation in the end otherwise if these punctuation marks are ending or if the first letters are not capital they won't be uh, sentences even though they convey full meaning sometimes we have such collections of words which have the same and required punctuation marks they do start with capital letters they do end in uh, the in full stop or question mark or sign of exclamation but still they are not uh, sentences because they do not convey full meanings they do not give complete thought for example we say a boy in the market you can see the first letter of this string of words a is capital and it ends in full stop structurally it seems to be a logical sentence because a sentence starts with capital letter this group of words also starts with a capital letter a sentence must end in full stop it also ends in full stop but still it is not a sentence because it does not convey full meanings a boy in the market we do not know what happens with that boy what does he do why is he there nothing uh, complete information uh, has been given here so it is not a sentence at all similarly playing football this group of words starts with capital letter it ends in full stop but still it is not a sentence because it does not give full meanings these are uh, may be called phrases not sentences and we'll be discussing what phrases and clauses are and how they are different from sentences in an other lecture so in a nutshell a sentence must start with a capital letter it must end in full stop or question mark or sign of exclamation and more importantly it must give full meanings also now usually in English an ordinary sentence has three components subject verb and object this is called SVO structure so for example I teach English 
I subject teach verb English object what a subject is what verb is what uh, object is this is also discussed in a separate lecture you can visit the channel and you can find it there sometimes in some situations if there is no object in case of intransitive verbs there is no object after the verb and still a sentence can exist it can convey complete meanings and subject and verb for example i teach it has also a fully meaningful structure and if it starts with capital letter it ends in full stop it has a logical sentence sometimes we may have understood subject and that is not written in the sentence as in the case of imperative sentences the the subject is understood and that is not written and the apparent sentence structure is only verb and object and sentence can exist in that case also as uh, if we say teach english this is a completely meaningful unit completely meaningful structure of words and if it starts uh, with capital letter as in this example t is capital and it ends in full stop it fulfills all the requirements so it is a logical sentence in certain specific situations only verb can also be used as a sentence because the subject is understood there and that is not mentioned that is not spoken that is not written and in specific situation if we say only teach that would act as a complete sentence and it would be considered as sentence only if it starts with capital letter and it ends in full stop so uh, a sentence can exist with the help of subject verb and object it can exist if there is no apparent subject only verb and object are there it can exist if there is only subject and verb and there is no object and even a sentence can exist if there is no apparent subject and no object and uh, um, only verb is used but interestingly if only verb is omitted from a sentence it won't exist it won't uh, remain intact a sentence cannot exist without verb verb is the most important and integral part for a sentence to exist as in the example uh, i teach english if we omit uh, only the verb teach it would remain i english and if we put the uh, full stop in the end and if we put i with capitals uh, still it won't be a sentence because it does not give any meanings so uh, verb is considered to be the most important and integral part for a sentence so uh, again in the examples for example we uh, we saw previously a boy in the market if we look back in the previous examples which were non sentences uh, despite having punctuation marks capitalization they were not considered to be sentences because they did not convey full meanings a boy in the market this is not meaningful unit this is not a sentence because it does not have verb in it similarly in the example playing football it does not have any finite verb it does not have any uh, subject and we'll be discussing what finite verbs are there what transitive verbs are there what intransitive verbs are there um, they have been discussed in other uh, lectures so um, this was all about uh, today's session stay with us happy learning allah hafiz